pleasant afternoon to you all. Welcome and thank you for joining joining us today in Ayala Mall's bespoke lifestyle session on jewelry. Surely it's a topic all of us women love and for centuries these profoundly beautiful works of art continue to enchant, hypnotize and evoke visceral reactions that stimulate our imagination and serve our innermost desires. No other more remarkable object quite captivates and delights than these pieces brimming with rich inspirational material set against architectural little sculptures that are simply irresistible. But what is it about these beguiling pieces that attract so intensely and passionately? How are they able to seduce our minds and hearts with unrelenting force? Our resource speakers today will share their take on the matter, as well as take us through the undulating journey into the stunning world of fine jewelry. As always, we hope these bespoke lifestyle sessions brought to you by Ayala Malls elevate your appreciation, deepen your background and knowledge, and empower your acumen so that we can equip you with a more solid foundation vital to making discerning choices to make each purchase as wonderful as an experience can be. This is, of course, in cooperation with Alveo Land, innovating the way you live. To our audience, we encourage you to please type in your questions in the Q&A or chat section, and we will gather them and ask them later on to our experts. Anyway, it's been said jewelry is not fashion. It has to last and not to be discarded as soon as something else comes along. Our first guest today couldn't agree more. A professionally trained gemologist from the prestigious Gemological Institute of America, she belongs to the third generation Velaya Jewelers family, one of the most trusted and premier names in Philippine jewelry. Having grown up in this environment, instinct and intuition flowed in her veins. Along with her exposure in the family jewelry business, she eventually blossomed to become a formidable force in the industry in her own right. Please welcome, good afternoon, Ms. Jade Velayo Lorayas. Jade, there you are. Hi, good yeah. afternoon. Hi. Anyway, Jade, there is, this is such an exciting topic. And like I said, it's a topic all women love and some men. Let us go through the basics. What are the most important things we need to know before even purchasing jewelry, such as what credentials should we be looking for in a jeweler? Okay, so if it's your first time to purchase, I would recommend going to someone you trust or at least your family trusts ask for a recommendation from your mom or your tita who's mahilig or go to a jeweler who you've heard about who's been there for a long time who who you know will not tarnish their name by selling you anything funny come to my store <laughs> but yeah go Sorry? you're from the gia you were trained is that sort of like a good basis to to find in a jeweler it always helps if you go to a jewelry store where there is a graduate gemologist because they're trained to tell you what's real, what's not. And, you know, they studied hard to get their degree, so they won't sully it and they're going to want to make the most of it. Well, it is the most prestigious in the world after all. But granted that, of course, not a lot of us know these things. Could you give us or share with us some layman tests? to identify quality and authenticity. Is this easily done visually? No, um, no. It's, so that's why it's really important you go to someone who you trust, someone who is helpful, someone who can walk you through the steps of purchasing a stone, purchasing a piece. Because right now, um, anyone can stamp 18 carat on anything, 14 carat on anything. So if you aren't sure, like my store, we have a scratch test where we can scratch the gold. And a 14 carat, if you scratch it on a stone that's meant for scratching, it stays yellow or it stays white. And then if it changes color, that means the gold is substandard or below 14 carat. And then the way to test that it's 18 carat is we have an acid that we put on the scratch 
gold and then we put ash and then if the gold scratch remains after the ash is put on then it's really 18 karat if it disappears then it's below 18 karat so again it's important to go to someone who will be upfront and helpful and you know someone you can trust so uh the warning goes that don't do this at home folks because you yes, may not no. have the proper yeah. tools the proper chemicals or the know-how because they might just dip it in yeah in, no uh, ingredients they see in the kitchen so no don't no, go no, to no, a no. professional go to a professional and because this is brought to you by ayala malls you know you sh you're sure they've been vetted the stores that are in the malls such as jades which is in alabang town center have been vetted authentic so anyway let's be please explain to me the basics we hear these words like carrot okay. clarity brilliance why don't you walk us through these things jade okay since we started with gold gold can gold for jewelry is best at 14 or 18 carats when it's higher than 18, it becomes too soft and might not be too durable. When it goes below 14, it can tarnish or sometimes trigger skin allergies. And that's carrot with a K. When it comes to stones, it's carrot with a C. And for, yeah, stones go by a carrot weight. And usually when you buy a stone, like for example, if it's a diamond, you have four categories you look at, which incidentally GIA made. You have the four Cs, which are carrot, color, clarity, and cut. And all of this put together is what will make your diamond beautiful and more valuable. And then with colored stones, you like their name, their value comes from their color. The richer the color, the more beautiful the red, the more vibrant the blue, that's where the value will come from. And also, as we'll talk about later, some stones only come in that particular color, and that also adds to their rarity and beauty. Let's talk a little bit about these, these these measures that you talked about, the four C's. Why, why don't we start with the cut? Because it's already okay. written here. What are the best cuts or, or recommended cuts or most the best best ones when you go through a, a store and you see the pieces on the on the shelves? Which, what cuts are, are best and settings? Okay, so when it comes to diamonds, the most in demand and the most popular is the round. The round brilliant, what it's also called, gives you back the most fire. Fire is the rainbow sparkly stuff you see around the stone. Then at the center of the stone, you'll see the white light, which is what we call brilliance. So a cut is made up of polish, symmetry, and shape. All of these put together can be excellent. And you can get a triple excellent grading, which is the highest grading now in GIA certificates. When you have a uh, triple excellent cut, you get maximum beauty back because cut is what makes the diamond speak and sparkle to you. After cut, you have color. Color or the lack of color in a diamond is another thing which can drive up the price and make it more beautiful. The highest color grade for a diamond is D, and that basically means colorless. Then you have EFG, where it's really white and bright. And then you have H, which is still white and bright. They say to the untrained eye, D, E, F, G pretty much look the same. So my diamond suppliers like to tell me with the color H, you get the most value for your money. Where it's really white, but you're not paying as much as a D, E, F, G, but it's still really nice. Then I is the last color before you start to see a tinge of yellow or any other color. And then J downwards, it gets a little bit yellowish and more yellowish. So that's color. And then you have clarity. Clarity is the lack of blemishes in a stone. That when you look at the stone, it's clear. You don't see any black dots, white dots, or lines. That's clarity. So VVS1 to VVS2 to VS2 means that with the naked eye, you do not see anything wrong with it. So this is usually the clarity I'll recommend for rings. So when people want to show them off, they don't see anything. And then SI means slightly included, or if you look at it long enough, you'll see it with the naked eye. And then below that, you have I, where the flaws can cause damage to the stone or make the stone to damage. Okay, that was quite a breath. Let me just yeah. <laughs> reiterate that for our viewers. Jade's best choice for cut is the round. 
of course it goes beyond but for basics the round is the most beautiful uh to begin with well and then yeah go sorry. jade and for one carat size and below the round looks biggest but then after one carat i'd say all the other shapes are beautiful too that it's your personal preference or the ones you're giving will come in and then for color the wider the better in terms of diamond if there's a yeah. tinge of yellow uh please double check if the quality yeah. is good still and then for brilliance you said what was the keynote for brilliance again for uh, um, if you can if your but if your budget can afford it try to get a triple excellent uh grading cut or as try to get as best a cut as you can like nothing below may be very good because sometimes you'll have an, a, a white stone a big stone but then it's not sparkling that means the cut wasn't good and then people will have put be putting glitter just to make it even more sparkly <laughs> anyway <laughs> uh, i was joking anyway let's talk about metals because earlier you mentioned there's a wide variety there's platinum and gold and silver rose gold and yellow gold and all the gradings could you inform can you educate us a bit more on this one okay platinum is the hardest it's also much more expensive it used to, it's around three times the price of 18 carat white gold but the problem with platinum is it's very hard so if you like would like to one day resize your ring or melt it down into something else that's very difficult to do with platinum um, because the tools it requires are very different from gold and the torch it requires is a, is a fire hazard in a lot of malls and won't be allowed in regular workshops. Mm -hmm. So then with gold, you have 18 carat and 14 carat white or yellow. White gold is a little more expensive because the alloys are a little more expensive. And when you melt down white gold, we normally suggest at least 18 carat because it can get harder and more brittle and it will affect the polish. Rose gold will have the same value more or less as yellow gold. The problem is because of the high content of copper, it can tarnish, but then you can always clean it because it's gold and that's only on the surface. And then silver is the whitest metal, but it's also really white, which some people don't like, and um, it tarnishes really quickly. So that's a problem with silver jewelry. Any personal favorites? Because within gold, there is a range of spectrum, which is the 14, the 18, the and so on without cost uh, putting a cost to it any yeah. particular favorites jade um i like 14 karat gold because i'm very acidic and when it's oh. white i can make the plating fade faster so i always ask clients if you're when they ask me for a recommendation on the carrot i will ask are you acidic if they are acidic i do recommend 14 karat which is a little harder than uh, 18 karat so a little more durable and yeah, I find it more secure. And I just like how it stays wider longer. Okay, so that's a sure bet. Anyway, let's talk about stones. We spoke a little bit about diamonds, and that was fascinating, of course, but there are countless gems in the whole world with all the all the beautiful, stunning pieces that are uh, harvested all over the world. Uh, could you take us through the birthstones? Because that's something that's very popular among collectors, especially if uh, they gravitate towards their particular birth month. So do you mind sharing with us these? Sure. Yeah, like you said, there are so many stones. But yeah, going by the birth month is a good way to narrow it, narrow down the discussion. And uh, I'll just go through them quickly because I don't want to finish all our time. But each stone also has its own lore that if this is your birthstone, you can look it up. So January is usually garnet. And garnets actually have several different kinds. But the one for January is the almondite garnet, which tends to be brownish and red. But it also can have a really nice deep red color. February is for amethysts. And amethyst is a purple stone. And they used to say before, if you wore an amethyst when you went drinking, you wouldn't get drunk. Because it's a stone of Bacchus. And then March, you have Pomarine, which is a nice light blue to um, medium blue and can be also bluish green and bloodstone. Then April, you have Diamond. May, you have Emerald, which is the only stone that really comes in this really nice green color and it can be transparent. 
The problem is emeralds tend to always be very included, so you have to be careful you care for them. And then June, you have what we call the phenomenal stones. They are pearl, moonstone, and alexandrite. Phenomenal because they come with something extra. Pearls have an orient, which when it, you find that part, it shows a rainbow color. Moonstone has adularescence, which when you show a flashlight on it, it can have a cloudy glow inside. And alexandrite, depending on the light you're in, can be purple or green. And then you have July, which is ruby. And ruby is part of the corundum family, which is the second hardest after diamond. So sapphires, so a ruby is actually a sapphire that's red, um, can get the next best polish to a diamond. Then after June, a uh, July, you have August, which is peridot. A peridot is the only stone that comes in this special apple lime green color. And then you have September, which is sapphire. Now sapphire, again, is also a corundum like ruby. Now what makes a sapphire a sapphire is it's blue. And what makes a ruby a ruby is it's red. But sapphires actually come in all colors of the rainbow. But when it comes with another in another color other than blue, you call it fancy. So fancy pink sapphire, fancy yellow sapphire, fancy light blue. And this doesn't mean it's fake. It's just that it's another colored sapphire. Then October has pink tourmaline and opal. Opal, we, I usually recommend just for pendants and earrings because they can be very brittle. And if you, can, if you hit it hard with your finger, it can break. November is citrine or imperial topaz. So the November stones reflect the sun and the different shades of the sun. So either the bright yellow or the rich deep yellow that it turns into during sunset. And December has turquoise, tan, the night and zircon. Now I looked up why the months have several stones and it's so people have more choices as to what fits their budget and what's available. Yeah. So, so let's, those are the birth stones. Thank you. I mean, they're all lovely and stunning and beautiful, but why don't you <laughs> calibrate it for us a little bit in terms of pricing, the bracket of pricing, affordable, okay. but good quality, entry level and a splurge, which is worth every penny. Okay, your splurge stones would be the diamond. And then you have the big three, which are ruby, emerald, and sapphire. And then affordable ones will be pretty much the rest. Well, no, pink tourmaline can be expensive because there aren't many pink colored stones. But so amethysts, um, citrines, opals, garnets, those are much more affordable. You can also get aquamarines of that are um, reasonably priced. But again, any colored stone that you say you can get cheap, you can also get expensive, depending on the richness of the color and depending on the size and how well it's cut. A lot of things come into play. But um, what I say, when someone comes to the store and they talk about stuff, I always ask, what is your budget or what's your price range? And then we try to find the best buy within that budget because I don't want you to break the bank. Of course, of course. Thank you for being very consci conscientious <laughs> when it comes to that. Anyway, let's move a little bit further because it is Christmas season. It's gift giving season. So Jade, are there particular recommendations that you share with your clients or our viewers uh, at large of what are great jewelry choices for oneself, for maybe a, a husband or a wife, uh, give and for your children. Um, I'll always tell someone who's looking for something, what does the ask or ask the person what do they like? Like I was talking to someone recently who wanted to buy a ring for a new girlfriend, and I said, okay, what rings does she like? And then he told me she doesn't really like rings. I'm like, oh, okay, so maybe then what does she like? She was earrings or necklace, and so we ended up with necklace and pendant. So I guess the way to make your money get its best is buy what the person likes, buy what you know you like. Like so, buy it for yourself or buy it to make that person happy more than anything, and then you'll get your money's worth. So just tell the husband, give me a blank check. I'll take care of everything else. <laughs> How about for children, That's, Jade? For children, when da they're especially really, daughters. Yeah, when they're really young, I recommend like simple gold hoops or simple studs. 
maybe not really the diamonds or unless you don't mind them losing it. But if it's something that you'll feel bad that if it gets lost or broken, then I'll say hold that off until they're older. And also for like little boys and little girls, if they're very active, maybe not really necklaces because it might get pulled while playing. So small earrings are good for little kids. And then as they get older, maybe they can get a necklace, a bracelet, a little ring. Yeah. Uh, we actually have a segment to chat about proper care of your jewelry. But I actually wanted to ask this right now because you talked about wearing necklaces for young boys or hoop earrings. What is your tip there for children? Don't take it off, take it off. Me, it's gold. Don't take it off. Like you can take a bath with it. Maybe I'll just say don't swim with it because uh, chlorine eats into gold and then maybe they can lose it. But yeah, don't take it off. Like keep your earrings on. If there's small hoops and they don't bother the back of your ear, little girls, you can sleep with them so you don't lose them. Yeah, just wear it. It's gold. It's safe. It's usually when you take it off, that's when you lose it. Okay, I want to spend a little bit of time because there are questions here from the audience and I'll incorporate this to the next part of our chat, which is remodeling because like yeah. we inherit a lot of pieces from our mothers or for, um, for our grand from our grandmothers and it's really not up to date there you know it it speaks of a certain era which we're not really which doesn't appeal to us. Could you go through some tips on restyling, remodeling so that they're made contemporary, Jade? Okay, so if you're lucky enough to have inherited jewelry, now there's nothing wrong with you wanting to remodel it because jewelry is really personal. So maybe that person, your Lola, your Tita bought it and that was her type. It doesn't mean it has to be your type. Mm -hmm. So what we do is you can bring your pieces to the store. We weigh the gold, we tell you what carrot it is, we tell you how much you'll get from it, and then you show the design you like, and then we can melt down the gold and turn it into that. And if you have big stones that you want to reset, we just measure them in front of you and we let you take them home. And when the piece is ready for it, then you come back and we set it in front of you. So you're guaranteed that this is your stone, it wasn't switched. Because some people do worry about that, but you get um, but everything's transparent and we do it in front of you. But that's a beautiful jewelry. You can remelt it. Like we have clients who ha make something this month and the next month they have it melted again and they want to make something new. Oh, so, yeah. wow. So, they, yeah, they, I, I, they're, they're very creative then. They want their to hobby. Keep, on ev <laughs> keep on evolving. But I, one thing that you pointed out, uh, I remember we had a conversation about this, Jade, before, that you don't let extremely precious stones in your in your custodianship without the the uh, permission of your client or you make them wait so that they um, take it home yeah yes um i guess years of ex i've been doing this for 20 years and i guess i've oops okay um years of experience have taught me that uh, the client is safest and most secure when they hold their stone I've never had any problems in my store. Of, I'm lucky my goldsmiths have never stolen anything from me. But mm -hmm. I do hear stories of people saying, yeah, I had this made here. And you know, I'm not sure. I mean, like there's no evidence. They're not sure that it was switched, but they just have this uncertainty. So to make sure that doesn't happen, you can keep all your big stones and we just measure them. If there are little stones in your design, we'll ask for the sm one small stone so we can base it on that or we'll set the little ones which aren't as valuable but they are the big items you keep and we'll you set we'll set them in front of you what do you, what is the how would how does it go when someone wants to restyle it do they give you a design right away because some of them may not even know what they want or what are the possibilities you know, with, with the materials they have. What is the process well, like, Jade? That's the beauty of the internet now. So anytime someone comes to the store, if they don't have their design, they can say like, what's flashing now in the screen? This lady brought a ring that she was tired of. And then right then and there, I said, okay, let's look up design. So she said, I want something modern. I want something that's light. So we found this picture on the internet and she said, okay, I like. And we used her gold, that, that's her diamond. We set it in front of her. I know, sorry, this one, well, this was a friend. And so this one left her stone, but she was very happy when she received it. 
But so the process is if you have the, your own gold, we'll use it. And that's a really good thing because gold is so high now. And if you have your own stones, we'll use it. If you don't have enough, we can add. And we'll do everything we can to make it to make your dream item possible. Actually, there are a lot of questions on proper care. But before I get into that, because I'm sure you'll have a lot of nuggets of wisdom on that one, Jade. You always talked about buying something you love, that there is an yes. emotional yes. connection. It resonates with you. This has been your experience as well, Jade, with your customers, correct? I, um, another thing I love about this industry is when do people buy jewelry? They buy it usually to commemorate special occasions. Like you meet a husband excited to give his wife a gift because she just pushed out their baby or you're gonna meet some nervous stars, um, a love struck guy who wants to buy the dream engagement ring for the right girl he finally found, or it's a couple celebrating their how many anniversary. So it's always a happy occasion and you get to be part of this. And I usually just guide them to what I think they want. Like I, I taught my staff to ask a lot of questions, let the clients do all the talking and really listen to what kind of person they are, what lifestyle do they lead and find them the right piece for that. But yes, it's a happy thing to make someone. And then when they do find the right piece or when we've made it for them and you see the smile on their face, that makes our day. And it, it is a conversation piece. Like when you see a certain, oh, I got this when I gave yeah. birth to my first child or this store, the story behind the, the the scoping of the perfect engagement yeah. ring well of course you said it's always related to happy occasions i guess it's happy for the recipient not so much for the one issuing the check to purchase it right anyway that's well, I'm, I'm kidding of course but in a fairness Go my ahead. husband says my engagement ring is his best investment because like 10 years later i still love looking at it it still makes me smile and you know the latin origin of jewelry actually means plaything so jewel really jewelry is really meant to make you happy to bring joy that that is true anyway some do's and don'ts so now that you've started collecting or you've collected quite a number of pieces let's talk about proper storage i remember you already mentioned some one don't which is don't swim with it uh on with gold because it tends to oxidize it is that no the correct chlorine term? eats gold chlorine eats, eats gold eats sorry through gold okay yeah so and now what so other, other activities can't we do go ahead jade sorry i think i'm only gonna say other swimming activity? yeah i'm only gonna say all right i'm only gonna say swimming because chlorine eats through gold and anyway if you're wearing real gold your sweat is fine so going to the gym is fine maybe the only real weights they might get scratched and bug bug so it's more for the care of the, the ring than than damage to it um but if you're you're every if you're wearing something gold you can wash your hands you can do errands you can do anything in them but after that and better like to put them on right Put them, yeah, put yes. them on. Don't w yes. remove them yes. when you're washing hands, Jade. Yes. I find that you lose your jewelry more when you remove them and put them on counters. Like my husband once, for the first time, lost his engagement ring when he washed his hands in the airport and left it there. So it's always leave them on. Or if you're wearing something fancy after a dinner, when you remove them, wipe it down with a soft cloth because your perfume or your sweat could oxidize when you store it. And then when you take it out, you're like, Ay, why is it black or why is it dirty? So just wipe it after. You can bring them regularly to a store like mine that offers cleaning and we can check your stones because diamonds are harder than gold. So eventually they will cut through gold. That's why sometimes you'll notice your stones are loose. And it's just, yeah, after you use something, wipe it down, store it in like a pouch or a box. Never wrap them in tissue paper because you might throw them in the trash can. And we've had clients, you know, and it's so heartbreaking. One threw away her three carat diamonds because they were wrapped in tissue and she thought it was trash. So no, oh no tissue, please. Yeah, no <laughs> tissue. Clear plastic bags or their jewelry boxes. You said uh, why wipe it with cloths. Is there a particular cloth that our audience should be looking at or buying? My Lala would always say white handkerchiefs. 
But I think Carter. any so <laughs> yeah, any simple white handkerchief. Like when I was training in Ding Valaya to be a sales girl, we all had white hankies in our counters to wipe everything. But I think any soft cloth will work. So no preference, like a microfiber or those, you know, the high tech. Mm-hmm. Well, not particularly. Get, um, but yeah, any soft cloth. All right. You also mentioned that they react to our oils and to perfume and to all these. What are cleaning agents that we should be using? Uh, you see all these things in the retail environment that they sell are the best solution for cleaning your gold. What say you about these things? Okay. When I was in GIA, uh, like how many years, 12 years ago, they said joy. <laughs> A little bit of joy in a little warm water and you can swish your stuff, your jewelry in there and then rinse it well and then dry it well. So that's really basic. Do you use a toothbrush to clean no. it? No, um, do not. I don't recommend you brushing even if it's a soft brush because you can dislodge or make one of your stones move and they might fall off. So just do simple cleaning and wiping but leave the polishing, the brushing to a professional when it really needs it. Well. It's the season of DIY, so even if that's possible, please just visit a professional because yeah, we're open. Precious jewels, precious materials, so you want them to last as long as possible. Thank you so much, Jade, for such uh, enriching information covering the basics, the different facets, and some intelligent and practical advice that you shared earlier. But Jade... Please do stay on with us because the audience is quite excited to learn even more about the elements you mentioned earlier. So don't worry to all our viewers. Jade will be back and she will entertain your questions, which we are currently gathering. So please do give let them pour on the chat or the Q&A section and we will ask them all with, from Jade later on. But anyway, at this point, let me just make mention that something Jade said, which resonated particularly to me, which is the my particular birthstone is the pearl because I was born in June. And when it comes to pearls, the Philippines is well renowned for our for our pearls, especially the stunning South Sea pearls. And speaking of South Sea pearls, no other name comes to mind as the ultimate authority in this arena than Jewel Mer. Established in 1979, Jewelmer has grown globally to represent a world of rarity and enduring elegance. Our next resource speaker is the AVP for retail sales at Jewelmer. She has been with the company since 2011 and has had 20 years of experience in retail, merchandising, and category management. She is, she is responsible for providing unique uh, shopping experiences to all value, valued Jewelmer clients, as well as introducing the brand to emerging markets. Her mission is to encourage a deeper appreciation for the Golden South Sea Pearl through education-centric retail initiatives. Good afternoon and welcome, Ms. Tess Catedral. Hi, Jingai. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hi, and, and good I afternoon see to everyone. I see the beautiful, the yes. beautiful background you have of the the beautiful stuff you have at Jewelmer. I, I'm I'll quite go straight to the point because, like I said, I have quite vested interest in this because this is my birthstone. So why? I mean, where does the this pearl come from? Why don't you okay. take us through? All right. Um. Jingai, let me answer your question by defining first what the pearl is, okay? The pearl is actually a living gem born out of living organisms. It is the only gem created by nature, okay? So specifically for the South Sea pearls, they actually come from the Pintada Maxima oyster species, this one, which thrives in, mainly in the Philippines, and it's one of the biggest um, species in the world. It can grow from 20 to 35 centimeters in length and in weight as heavy as five kilograms. From these shells, we can actually harvest nine millimeters to, a, uh, to 24 millimeter pearls. And a jingai, it takes about five years to oh. be able to harvest just one pearl 
per shell. Wow. Sorry. So that's yes. that makes yeah. it very special, you know. Okay. What? Well, yeah. I w that was my next question. What makes it so spectacular? This particular South Sea pearl. Could you talk and take us through the main steps involved? Okay. So um, just those are just a few wonders of the pearl, no? Um, what makes it special is that first, it is an environmental gem. Um, the pearl is a natural indicator of the health of the environment. It is actually an early warning sign for the pollution problems because the slightest level of pollutants in the water um, will actually prevent the oyster shell from proper pearl production. Okay. Next, um, it, it, uh, each pearl is unique. No two pearls are alike. Um, it is one of the few gems that doesn't have to be cut, polished, or shaped for you to be able to appreciate its beauty. It's what nature has intended it to be. And lastly, it is very special because it is the national gem of the Philippines. It was proclaimed in 1996 by President Fidel Ramos because um, it symbolizes um, loyalty, pride, and uh, love for our country. Okay, so it's something that, we'll, that we can call our very own. Um, it's something that when you wear the pearl, it's not just wearing a piece of jewelry, you're actually wearing our culture. So you have to wear it with pride. That was so beautifully put. Yes, indeed. That's why I love the South Sea Pearl because it's one of those that we can brag about. Yes. That is really unique to us in this country. What are the other factors um, that determine the value of the pearl? But you mentioned the, the steps, but can you take us through these um, hundreds or so? Yes, steps. Oh, okay. So um, in terms of the steps, it takes 377 steps. And as mentioned earlier, five years for us to be able to produce or harvest one pearl per shell. Okay. But um, I won't discuss anymore the 377 <laughs> steps or else the uh, na tayo ng Pasko. All right. So <laughs> just to share maybe uh, major stages or major steps, we start off with hatchery. Okay. So we harvest our own, uh, we breed our own uh, oyster shells. And it takes about two to three years before it matures and it goes to the next step, which is grafting. Okay, grafting is when the delicate procedure or operation happens. The oyster is still alive, so the technician has to be very, very careful uh, so as not to harm the oyster shells. After which, it goes through post-operation stage. So just like any other human being, after a procedure, you have to rest and recuperate. So similar to that, uh, the pearls or the oysters actually are very much well taken care of by our farmers. They are pampered at this stage. And lastly, the most magical moment for us is the harvest period. Okay, It is the only time you will find out if you're able to harvest a pearl because there are times when we actually do not, okay? And it is the only time that we will find out whether the pearl that we are about to harvest is 13 millimeters, gold, round, uh, flawless in terms of skin purity. So we, um, it's com we compare it to giving birth. So if let's say during the entire pregnancy, you did not have any ultrasound, okay? It is the only time you will find out whether you'll have a boy or a girl. So it's a very magical moment. So harvest is similar to giving birth. And one of the pieces that we are really very proud of is what we call the Palawan Strand, named after the our pearl farms in Palawan, okay? So it took us actually, um, no, it is composed of 35 South Sea pearls, from 16 millimeters to 18 millimeters, perfectly matched in gold. And it took us 37 years, Jingai, to complete it. 
Oh my goodness. And no wonder it is very special. Sometimes yes. you like you said you don't you're not even sure. You take care of something so long and when you open it it's not even there. Now I have a better appreciation of why it is really so special. It is really sought after. Let's talk about the valuing of this. Uh how do you determine the value? The value of- factors. Yes. yes. Okay. When you um when we look Um, when we want to purchase diamonds, we look at the four C's, right? There's the cut, the clarity, color, and um, carrot. Now, for pearls, we want to share these five value factors so that when you go out and want to start your pearl collection, these are the things that you look for. Okay, first, we have size. Okay, so size, um, it ranges from 9 millimeters up to 24 millimeters, but it is quite rare now to be able to harvest 15 millimeters up. Okay, next we have color. So Philippine South Sea pearls come in warm natural colors, um, different shades of white. So from white to cream, silvery white. And then different shades of gold. We have creme rosé, champagne, dark champagne, and gold. The golder it is, the higher the value. Okay. Next, we have shape. So we have different um, shapes from round to semi-round. We also have button, which we would call shopao because it's flat at the bottom and then round on top. These are actually good for um, earring studs. And then we have those uniquely shaped um, pearls, oval, okay, different shades or different shapes of shapes of baroque, circled and cashy. Now you have to remember, Jingai, all of these are natural. Again, we don't know what we will harvest, what kind of pearl, what shape of pearl we will harvest until harvest period itself. And then we have skin purity. Okay. Skin purity would be um, like the face of the pearl. So these flaws, okay, people would say, oh, we have dents okay, or dimples. Um, these are all natural. It actually authenticates the pearl. Some would want it with some flaws. Some would want it flawless. Of course, the more flawless it is, the more expensive or the higher the value it is, right? And lastly, we have Orient and Luster, okay? This is one of the nice value factors of the pearl. Um, Orient is actually the inner glow of the pearl, and Luster is the outer shine of the pearl. So Orient is like when light is refracted against the pearl and it bounces back. For us, it has to be both Orient and luster, we want both inner beauty and outer beauty of the pearl. Okay, um, let me share with you, uh, Jingai, a simple technique on how to check on the orient and luster of the pearl. No? So when you go to a shop, what you can do is you actually put your finger against the pearl. So if, let's say, I have my pearls here, okay, you put your finger against the pearl. And if you can see your finger and your nail, Clearly, on the pearl, it has very excellent orient and luster. So the mirror image. So maybe after this talk, um, you or our um, participants, you know, the ones joining us tonight, uh, this afternoon, can they check their pearls (laughs) with those simple techniques? You you also, I remember Tess, uh, I don't know if this was an old wives tale, but you kind of scratch the pearls against each other and that shows you that it's of good quality or or I mean could you could you yes. li- enlighten us on that okay actually we would like to um what's more popular is that um you rub the pearls against your teeth mm. okay we don't recommend that for hygiene. <laughs> okay. You don't know, Jingai, how many teeth those pearls have rubbed on off. Okay. So a simple technique um, with the same concept, okay, is to rub two pearls together. And when it has that sandy, gritty feel, and you wipe it off, there are no scratches, it is real. Okay, so there's friction. If it slides off or glides off smoothly, 
it can either be a, a bead, a glass, or plastic. Okay, so those are simple techniques that you can um, try when you go to a shop. Mm. Uh, how about styling pearls? I mean, I see your beautiful ads around the metro. And how should one style pearls? Could you give us some tips on, in this arena, Tess? Okay, pearls um, highlight and complement the beauty of the wearer, of the person. It doesn't compete with it. No? Um, it's very classic. It exudes elegance, yet very versatile and fun. Okay, so that's why we want to debunk the myth that pearls are only for uh, a formal affair. You can actually wear your pearls uh, for casual um, with your jeans and polo or shirt. Or even now with your favorite PPEs, you can wear your pearls. You can have um, the pearl, so the pearls, the pearls within your mask, right? They put pearls <laughs> here. <laughs> anyway, sorry, Tess. And, and to a more formal um, um, wear, no? um, layering is very much in trend. So you can layer your um, pearl jewelry with other jewelries, okay, with your other pieces of jewelry. And also we have designs now for men, okay? Just to share with you, Jingai, it's actually in early civilization, it's actually the men who wore pearls first because it symbolized uh, wealth and power. So for them, they would wear pearls, they would adorn it on their garments so that they can show the entire world how powerful and how wealthy they are. So we have pieces already for men, um, we have bracelets, we have uh, brooches, we have cufflinks. We also have friends already who have bought his and hers. So matching. Yeah. So those are the kinds of um, design and styles that we have now. It's very versatile and fun. So you said it invites wealth and power, correct? So yes. give me some of those. Our, our <laughs> audience, our audience probably are. I'm gonna go get some of this pearl <laughs> that uh, Miss Tess is talking about. But before we go through the next part, which is the environmental consciousness and preservation, it's how how do you determine? Like you the, you see so many of these trends, maybe in and I'm sorry to call the changes or mm -hmm. or the marketplace in the marketplace. Are they fakes? Are well, they okay. even good in quality? Those, um, places in those changes, they would have um, a variety of pearls. They would have freshwater pearls. Majority would be freshwater pearls. And then they would have some Akoya pearls and maybe a little bit of South Sea pearls. Okay. Um, some would also have um, treated pearls. Okay. And what they do to an untrained eye. Okay, since you don't know how to really look at it, sometimes they might mix it, all right? For us, uh, we can really guarantee the authenticity of our pearls that they really come from our farms in Palawan. Mm. That's uh, at least we're assured if it's in a legitimate store. So yes. just be careful. I suppose it's really just be careful. And yes. when checking, don't bite them because it might break your teeth, <laughs> aside from the fact that it's not really hygienic. Now, let's talk about the the environmental. You mentioned that these are living items. These are, yes. sorry, do you call living them gems. living gems? So uh, before I even go to the environment it sees itself in, it's not true that they produce children. Right? This is so a the myth, nanganak, right? yeah. The nanganak, yes. yes. So That's not I've, true. I've heard that from my lola, and we always get asked that question. Nanganak ba ang pearls? Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, again, pearl is a living gem, but once it's taken out from the oyster, it stops growing. Okay. And as a living gem, it has to be well, uh, properly taken care of. Okay. So the handling and the proper care should be there so that um, the organic compositions of the pearl does not change. So it's not true. It's not true. Okay, thank you very much for clearing that. Um, something I like about what we spoke about, one of the things we spoke about in the past is that you are really dedicated to preserving the environment because after all, 
you harvest these gems straight from nature. So you do have a project to pursue preservation of the resource of our natural resources, correct, uh, Tess? Yes. Um, our principals actually founded the Save Palawan Seas Foundation because we wanted to make sure that we have marine protected zones. So protected against illegal, illegal fishing activities. So we educate and we help the communities around Palawan. We provide livelihood projects for them. We support local schools by providing education to the children. We have medical mission activities and other activities, um, as mentioned. Um, we also have the Pearl of Hope, the bracelet Pearl of Hope, where in proceeds of that will go to the Save Palawan Seas Foundation. I think anyone who throws anything to the sea or to the environment, they should just go to jail because I'm very much of an environmentalist, as you can see in my background. It's so important to preserve. We only have one earth. And I'm sorry to digress, but that's really something I feel yes. so strongly about as and, well. And I agree with you. All right. Let's now talk about the Golden South Sea Pearl. It is such a valuable gem. So we have to take care of it for it to look its best. Mm -hmm. Why, Aside from the tips that you gave earlier, Tess, um, could you expound on it and add more helpful tips for us? Okay. Again, um, since the pearl is a living gem, it needs moisture. And the best moisture that we can give it is our very own oil and moisture. So we recommend that you wear it often. After you wear them, you take them off and then you just wipe them with a soft damp cloth, all right? And then uh, we also recommend that you separate your pearls from other jewelry in terms of storage, okay? Um, in terms of storage as well, we do not recommend um, putting them in vaults or safety deposit boxes because these are quite dry. But if you have to leave them in those places for a long period of time, what we recommend is you put a small glass of water, those shot glasses, inside okay. the vault. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Let me go back. You said first, don't put them with other precious gems and the or jewels. And the rationale for that is so that it won't get scratched? Yes, yes. Okay. And then for the water, I mean the moist, don't put them in safe and vaults, which is actually something that most pearl owners yes. they put it right away in the safe course, or the vault it's in very the, valuable right? because you're so scared for <laughs> it to be stolen so you said yes. you can put a shot glass or with water yes inside so that there's moisture but i'm so scared i mean if you open the safe what if the the shot glass i mean we don't have the same uh infrastructure as and cabinets that you guys have there in jewelware and they look beautiful behind you uh silica gels or what other uh, what other contraptions well, those, are um, those silica gels yes that can also help because it adds moisture to it that is also fine and what we also recommend um well for jewel pieces we offer lifetime service of cleaning and restringing for strands so you can bring them to any of our shops anytime all right okay so sorry i interrupted you please go on you were at number two which is wipe it with uh soft with, dry cloth after every use yes and then um it's the it's the last thing that we recommend you wear in the morning after you've put on your um makeup your sunblock and the first thing that you remove at night when you get home remove your pearls and then makeup remover the toner um moisturizer so that it doesn't get exposed to um chemicals all right all yeah. right um make sure your pearls are dry make sure that it doesn't get scratched and there's moisture okay remember everyone these tips are very very helpful so let's go about as, there was one myth you already debunked uh mm -hmm. yes which is it doesn't give birth that's the mother of pearl which is a totally <laughs> different pearl. of course i joke but um what other myths are there that you're uh, usually confronted with with your customers well one of them would be how to uh, it's another way to test if the pearl is real or not um it's burning the pearls so we burning pearls to test if it's real or not, no? Like torching um, it? 
Yeah, so we don't okay. recommend that uh, burning or burning is not highly recommended because exposing them to high temperature can again change um, the organic com compositions of the pearl, right? And um, pearls are not just for more matured women, they are for women of all ages. Okay, again, it's very classic and elegant that you can wear them from day to night, from casual to a more formal wear. And, you know, there are some questions here, and let me just put them. These are from the audience. Okay. Um, I think this is relevant to debunking some myths. Are brown or pink pearls really pearls? Um, those might be treated, okay? So those might be treated or dyed. Um, we, for, for in terms of our pearls, we can um, certify that all the colors of our pearls are natural. So the better, the gold, the more golden they are, the better. If I remember your uh, the golder it is, yes, the higher the value, because it is actually quite rarer to harvest gold. Um, it takes more uh, time, effort, and food for the shells to produce the golden pearls. You know, through because some of the pieces uh, are probably inherited, like I mentioned with diamonds earlier you inherit certain pieces or maybe how it was strung, uh, didn't hold anymore because it's been decades. Let's talk a little bit more about remodeling pearl uh, into new styles. And this, that question is from Patty. Tess, what say you about remodeling? Okay, first with the strands. Um, again, we it is a lifetime service for us, for jewel mer pieces, for us to restring your strands um, if you wear them often, we recommend that you bring them to us on a yearly basis so that we can restring them for you, all right? Because it can get loosened with your um, oil and moisture when you wear them often. Okay, and then um, next is, um, sorry, what was the question? See? Yeah. No, no, other question? tips, other tips like for remodeling. Ah, okay. Um, well, we have had clients who have brought their pieces from that they have inherited for resetting or remodeling. Um, we bring them or we show them to our experts just to make sure if they can be reset. Okay, because like for strands, these are already already drilled through. There are holes already drilled through, so we might not be able to set them. Um, in whatever design they might have. So it is best that we show them to our experts, but if it's possible, yes, we can. Uh, there is a question here. Did you ever get a request for a pearl to become an engagement ring? Yes, especially for those who, uh, for the, um, those who were born July, uh, the month of June. 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 Yes. So the, the two of us, like the two of us, right? Um, yeah. Oh, you uh, are a Gemini. You're a Yes, Jew. I'm a Both Gemini. <laughs> okay, okay, perfect. So we have had uh, requests for engagement rings with pearls. Mm. So yes, it's possible. Well, it's, it's actually equally, if not equally valuable, it's still a very valuable and it's a statement piece. Correct. Yes, now, correct. I'm so tempted to ask you because I know Jewelmer is in how many countries uh, right now, Tess, in the market. What are the usual impressions of your foreign uh, clientele about our pearls? Because like you said, this is something that is unique to us. Yes. What's the usual feedback that you hear from them? Okay. We are, um, as you mentioned, we are present internationally. We are um, in more than 15 countries. Um, as trading offices or presence in department store or as a standalone shop. Our very first standalone jewel mer shop, just like what you see on this slide, is in uh, Palm Beach, Florida. So just in case you are in the area, please do visit the jewel mer shop there. Um, the international market, they're very, very intrigued with the golden South Sea Pearl. Um, they would always ask if the color is natural because um, the golden South Sea pearls, okay, white is very classic. It has been in, in the market for a longer time. Okay, so gold is fairly new. 
It started in the 80s. Um, our company was founded in 1979, but it took us a decade before we were able to really produce the Golden South Sea Pearl. Okay, so they are very much intrigued and in awe of the beauty of the Golden South Sea Pearl. And when they find out the process, the, the different steps that goes into it, they're really amazed, very much amazed with the Golden South Sea Pearls. I mean, it really is amazing. 377 <laughs> steps and you're not even sure if you're going to get one. That is remarkable. There's a question here. What kind of thread do you use for stringing pearls? Um, for that one, we use um, silk nylon, silk nylon thread. And what we do is we have knots in between the pearls so that just in case it breaks, it won't scatter. Mm -hmm. All right. So it's a, it's like a security for the strand. So we have uh, silk nylon threads. All right. Uh, any other messages about the pearl or trivia that you can share with us so that we, before we end and bring Jade back on desk and answer the questions from the, more questions from the audience. Anything remarkable that we should remember aside from the many points that you talked about? Um, it's just the... Um, how the Golden South Sea Pearl is. Again, it's the national gem. It is something that we should, um, it is a souvenir or a, um, a souvenir that we can wear when we go out to different countries. When we represent the Philippines, it's something that we can showcase. You know, it is our very own. So you wear it with pride. Correct. I wear it with pride. Amen to that. And take care of the environment. Two things that we, a lot of Filipinos are very, very concerned about. Fascinating, Tess. Fascinating. I actually Thank want you. to see the 377 <laughs> process. Although I don't think I can wait for five years to, to go through this. Well, just, we, we would like to invite you to the Pearl Farm. And you imagine, farm. it's like winning lotter, a lottery because you don't know if, you're, if you have one there. I mean... <laughs> I'd love to see that. Thank you. I would. I would. Fascinating. Thank you for Thank sharing you. a wealth of information about the precious gem, the pearl. At this point, Tess, please stay on. And All right. I invite back as we open the discussion. Please, everyone, type your questions in the Q&A section or is there a chat section here somewhere? And we'll go through it and our friends from Ayala and Alveo will go through it as well. But we'll make this a live and fun discussion. You know, we'll just after all, we're all girls here. So at this point, um, Jade, are you there? I'm here. Did I my here? Okay. Yeah. All right. So um, you're, you're also a Gemini, Jade, right? Yes, you're, I am. Ah. It's, I know. So your birth zone is the pearl, but your name comes from another precious. Is it a stone? The jade. I mean, yes. Uh, jade is a stone, and it's funny. Um, I was supposed to be a boy, so they were all set on naming me Jason, and then I came out early and was a girl. And then my dad at that time worked in Hong Kong, and he had jade clients, so he'd been learning about jade. So he told my mom, "Okay, let's name her Jade," and. <laughs> While a diamond is the hardest stone out there, a jade is actually a rock, an aggregate that is tougher than a diamond. It's harder to break a jade than it is to break a diamond. It is. Is that so? Yeah. I mean, I, I see these things in this place, especially when we visit China. When we used to visit China, they're just enormous. And my my golly, the price tag on the now I understand it deeper. Thank you for that explanation. There's a question here. Um, I see some rings with diamonds and they're priced at under 50,000. Are these real? Is that possible? Yes, it's possible depending on the quality of the stone. Yeah, it's possible to have diamond rings for 50,000. All right. So what are the chances uh, of the man say, of the girl saying yes to the man with a 50,000 pesos diamond is, is it's not up to us, right? <laughs> no, but okay. One, I had a client a few years back who had a budget of 50000 and he wanted to get a half carat. But what he could afford for that price was a really nice 0. 0.30. 
and he followed my advice, bought smaller but really white, well cut, so sparky. You know, the girl never complained. She was. He came back and said she's so happy she can't stop looking at it. That's why you go for quality, overall quality. And besides, it's again the emotional connection you have and the reason why it was given. Not so much that just because of the value of it. That adds to the value, correct? Oh, yeah. No, I tell girls, um, you know, an engagement ring is not a requirement. So if you get one, be grateful that he set aside his hard-earned money and gave you something. Correct. That is true. Um, here's another question. How often should I get my jewelry clean? I think for both pearls and diamonds or other special gems. Maybe Tess, let's start with Jewel Mer has a lifetime uh service correct but yeah. what is a good amount of time to have um have it clean? well like as mentioned earlier like for strands if you wear them um often we recommend that you bring them to us on a yearly basis to have them restrung um in terms of uh pearl jewelry okay the ones with um, metal and diamond um you can also bring them to us on a yearly basis so that we, we can do deep cleaning as well all right. Uh, and how about Jade for for other for diamonds and other precious stones? Um, I'll tell clients when it looks dirty, bring it to us to clean if you're not sure you can do it. And then diamonds, because diamonds attract grease. Um, your skin oils, your lotion, your soap, that'll really stick to a diamond. And I, yes, I don't recommend brushing it with a toothbrush because you might dislodge it or loosen it. So bring it whenever it's um, dirty. And whenever you buy something from us, we also offer lifetime cleaning. That is now a must. Lifetime cleaning. I love it. That's perfect. <laughs> um, there's another question here from Mary Rose. Mary Rose wants to know, can I clean my jewelry with polydent cleanser? Okay. Polydent. Is that a, for is that a either toothpaste? Uh, I'm not so, but it does sound like a, no, yeah. it sounds like a cleanser, yeah. just a normal cleanser. But so maybe, well, for us, have you heard of this? For, no, no, no. I haven't heard of the polydent. Um, for pearls, we don't really recommend any special cleaning agents or cleaning chemicals. As mentioned earlier, uh, just a soft damp, uh, cloth with water is fine after you wear them. And you can bring them to us for deep cleaning. Yeah. Say me, I'll say a mild soap or a mild detergent like joy and water. But yeah, pearls, bring them to jewel mirror or just wipe them down because pearls are porous and can absorb chemicals. Um, if you have emeralds or opals, also nothing harsh because um, they, they can be included. So yeah, just wipe them down and bring them to a professional. All right, so someone, uh, they actually just clarified, yes, polydent's a toothpaste. So now that okay. we know it is, no. <laughs> no? Prefer, um, prefer join to... Join the lab. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there's another question uh, here. We know that the South Sea Pearl is very special to the Philippines. How about diamonds? Are there diamonds from the Philippines? I know mostly from Africa and and other um, mineral rich countries. Do we have Philippine diamonds, Jade? I haven't heard yet of diamond mines here. We do have a lot of gold. Gold we have, coral, pearls, but yeah, not, I don't know if any of the other gemstones or yeah, I haven't heard of diamond mines discovered yet. Okay, uh, there's another question here from Mary. Is it super expensive to have heirloom pieces, whether they're diamonds or pearls, to be re- design because sometimes we get shocked with the bill that it's as expensive as the stones themselves or the the pearls themselves is that a realistic um assessment or what what are your comments on these things if you don't have gold and right now gold is really high and the design you want to turn it into uses a lot of gold then it will be expensive or if you choose a design that's very intricate and will take a lot of days for the goldsmith to make that will also drive up the price especially now with this pandemic where we have to shuttle our people pay for their gas to try to get them to work so um things are a little more expensive now but if your heirloom piece has gold we can melt down and it's just labor from us then it won't be so expensive 
but it's the yes, same things for us. of value do cost. Yes. 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 Yes, go ahead. Sorry. It's the same for us, um, for jewel mer pieces. If let's say they bring uh, jewel mer pieces that they want to reset, if it has metal, we just uh, melt them and then it's just labor or it depends on the design. All right. If they want a different design, a more intricate design, then if we have to add gold, then we would have to just charge them that particular um, gold, all right, and labor. But it depends. Eh? Yeah, it, it, you really have to know your, your uh, materials and see from there and work from there. Anyway, there is a question here, and I'm quite surprised. It's a, it's a male question. What engagement ring should I get for a girl who isn't into jewelry? I guess he's I wanting to propose already because he's <laughs> watching this to get tips on which one to to get for for his potential fiance or well or not maybe let's see. <laughs> you know that's a really good question. And I would say if she's not into jewelry or that's what you think cuz this could be the beginning. Um go classic. Go classic, go simple. Like, so maybe a simple six prong, simple band. If you want to put simple diamonds, little diamonds on the band, you can do that. But the nice thing with a simple design is you don't get sour. You don't get tired of it. Unlike if you do some, pick something that's really intricate. And you know, this has happened to me. This, a guy came and he had all these specifications for the ring. When he gave it, the girl came back and changed everything he specified <laughs> into what she wanted, which is fine. And they're still happily married. But yes, if you're not sure, go simple. And then, yeah, she can always one day when you're she's remodel it. But we've never had a problem with a simple classic, six prong, something like a Tiffany setting. And congratulations that you're thinking about buying an engagement oh. ring. Well, that is if the, the congratulations will Hi. be in order. <laughs> Congra Hi. Congratulations. Con so congratulations will be in order if she actually says yes. Anyway, um, here's the next question. I think this is relevant for both Tess and Jade. With the pandemic, we often need to disinfect our hands which is very very relevant with uh when we go to the malls or the grocery with sanitizer and alcohol and all these recommended products will they damage my gold rings with diamonds gems or pearls and that question is from marie car um who wants to go first yes okay. uh, marie car all right so well for one it's very good that you're following the you know what's supposed to be done now for safety um, well, it will not damage your pearls as long as it's not exposed to it um, on a regular basis. And again, after you wear them, just wipe them off, okay? So that any chemicals that have been exposed to it, they're just, you know, wiped off. All so, right. Um, Jade? So same, uh, the alcohol should be fine on diamonds, rubies, gold. If you have emeralds or opals or coral, something that's porous, maybe after the alcohol, rinse it out when you get home. And actually, so I wear my jewelry when I go to work in the mall. When I get home, because we all have to shower and disinfect, I put my jewelry in the shower with me. And while I shower, I also shower all my wa my watches, my earrings, necklaces, everything. So they get disinfected with me and they don't and you don't leave the alcohol residue on it for long. All right. Safety first and then safety and care for your for your jewels as well. Yes. All right. Thank you. Now there is a question here. How much gold or any material, I guess, whatsoever, when you remodel jewelry, how much of it do you lose? I guess okay. that works both for pearls and for other uh, metals and special gems, right? Okay, I'll, I'll go first. When you yes. melt down yellow gold, you can lose about 5 to 10%. When you melt down white gold, you can lose 10 to 15%. And that's just when you melt it down. And also, like if you start at 14, it will go a little lower, like it will hit 13, 12 carats. So it's better to start higher when you're going to melt something down. Or if, let's say, you start at 14 and you melt it down and you want us to raise it, we can add 24 carat to bring the carat back up again. All right. Yes? 
So it's it's the same, same as with what Jade has said. Um, it will go down a little bit, okay, if we melt. But um, for most of our pieces, since if we're talking about pearls, there's nothing to lose or there's nothing to melt. But for metals, um, it's the same as what Jade has mentioned. Okay. There, this is a back-to-back -back question because it's from two different people, but might as well string them because they're connected in some way. This person uh, uses the gar has or her birthstone is the garnet and she buys it whenever she travels, I suppose. Do we have a uh, quality garnet here in the, in the Philippines? That's the first part. So please, Jade, on that first. Um, yes, you can buy quality garnets in, here in the Philippines. I'm sure a lot of jewelry stores have. Like my suppliers can easily give me also. And it's relatively an inexpensive stone. All right. Um, now, the follow-up to that uh, from a different person is, please name, because you mentioned the word lore for birthstones. Aside from the men, what you mentioned on the most fascinating lores, are there other trivia that you can give us um, that are fascinating on the, on the folklore of all these birthstones? Wow, there's a lot. Like some stones, like I think a peridot will represent purity. Like all these stones, I guess it's also marketing to make them more interesting. <laughs> like some stones are supposed to give you wisdom, clarity, peace, and you can actually Google all these. Like you can Google your stone and then the meaning, and then it'll all come out. They're the definition. And but the pearl, all stones come. And yes, the pearl uh, in particular, Tess mentioned that earlier that it invites wealth and it yes, invites yes, power. And power. Anything and else? Positive and positive energy, actually. Um, and we need we need that right now. <laughs> yeah, especially now. <laughs> okay. Um, and there is another question up. Is rose gold of lower value than yellow gold? Uh, will it fade or tarnish? Jade. It's similar in value to yellow gold. And yes, because of the high copper content, it is prone to tarnishing. But this is only on the surface. You can wipe it and it'll become shiny again, or you just have it plated again. But like, if you're very acidic like me, I do have a rose gold ring, which I do need to have replated more often, maybe like every four months, because it tends to fade because of my acidity. Okay. Uh, this one's for you, Tess. Will your pearls get scratched by diamonds? Yes, correct. But so when you wear them and, and you layer diamond necklaces with pearl necklaces, what should be what should we be careful about? Um, okay. So like uh, as mentioned earlier, layering is a trend now. So you can layer pearl uh, jewelry with your other pieces of jewelry. Um, there is of course, a tendency for them to rub against each other, all right? But as long as it, there is not much um, in terms of push or hard rub on it, it won't scratch that easily, okay? So uh, um, I would just like to say, um, let's just say you wear it and then suddenly you bump into your other piece of jewelry or diamond, it's not going to scratch that right away okay so you just have to take maybe care they're of not of good quality they have to be <laughs> jewel <-mer>, correct <laughs> and your diamonds have to be from jade that's why you're assured of the quality um there's a question for you uh Tess, right now can we find jewel -mer in japan oh we're being watched in japan Tess. yes we are in uh japan um in uh let me try to um remember we are in Mitsukoshi. Okay. Department store, yes. Yes. So if yes. you and are Ginza. in Japan, please and everywhere yes. else. Yeah. And All we right. are right across the other global brands. Here's an interesting question. I guess from someone who's expecting an engagement ring from, from her boyfriend. Jade, are there diamond cuts that are better for certain hand types? Like if you have chubbier fingers or if you have shorter fingers. What say you in this matter? I think they're all beautiful and they will all make your hands look nicer. So it's more, what shape do you like? That's what you decide. Or you go to a store, try several several rings on and see which one makes you happy, which one you feel fits you and fits your hand. Because it'll be your personal preference. Like I didn't know 
what shape of diamond I wanted until I was at that moment when it was okay. I get to find my engagement ring now. All right. I it think we can be go... something that will um, call you, if I yes. may add. Yes, yes, as long as yes, it calls yes. you. <laughs> yes, you'll know. You'll yes. know. It's one of those you'll things. Know. I guess it's it's like romance and love. You just know. It will. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You will hear music. There's a question here <laughs> for you, Tess. What pearl shape is most used for earrings? Um, well, it depends on the design. Um, as mentioned earlier, if it's earring studs, um, it is nice to have uh, the button shape or the chapeau so that it's a little bit flat on your earlobes. Um, if it's dangling, we usually use um, oval or drop so that it really highlights the style. So it depends on the design of the earrings. Actually, that's a very popular choice for little girls. Because I bought my daughter also, as much as I bought her a pair of studs, I also bought her, you know, simple pearl earrings because yeah. it, it's very cute for little girls. So this is something yes. that you have a big demand for as well, Tess? Yes, for, for little girls. Yes, um, we have requests for some studs simple studs for little girls so they're starting them young okay uh, i think there's a follow-up question to that Tess. sorry while i have you what is your advice for a first time person looking for a pearl necklace as or, an investment investment i don't know do you like that word investment investing on pearls um what yeah. is your advice yeah um okay specifically for necklace that, that was the question? For a necklace, pearl necklace, yes. What is your advice for a first-time investment on a pearl necklace? Okay, it would, um, again, it would boil down to what she likes, okay? Uh, what she'll be comfortable in. Would she want um, strand, pearl strand right away? Or would she want um, chain with a pearl pendant? And, it's, and it also depends on uh, the purpose of when she's going to wear them. Does she want it for everyday wear? Or is it something more formal? But for someone who will start, um, actually, we have our Christmas package pendants that we come out with every holiday season. Um, that is something that we really want to share as, an, um, as a startup for, for a collection. Um, if I may show that, we have here. Oh, so cute. So, so cute. it comes with a silk cord already. So these pendants, um, it starts from 18,000 pesos up until 25,000 pesos. So it's a very good um, start um, piece if you, want your, if you want to build up your pearl collection. Actually, there are quite a number of questions, but you know we've we've been at this for quite a while, and I know our discussions can go on and on uh, about jewelry and pearls and diamonds. There is, I just want to end, I guess, with this very interesting question: Is it okay to treat jewelry as an investment? Is it smart to do that? I know Jade has very um, very strong opinions on this so maybe Tess I'll start with you you said it's okay to good it's a good investment but it's also an emotional connection correct Tess? Yes that's correct um, it for uh, personally all right personally I would say yes it is a good investment and um, it's something that is uh, in terms of emotional um, connectivity you know it's more of a reward to yourself um, it is now a trend that women usually buy jewelry for themselves, right? It's really rewarding yourself. And for me, that is one of the biggest investments, how to reward yourself. Well, we, as we say, us women, we deserve it. <laughs> anyway, Jade, your take on the matter. I grew up hearing jewelry was an invest, is an investment. And then when I went to GIA, so they asked me and I brought it up and my teacher gave me a funny look and he said, okay, that's an Asian thing because here in the U.S., <laughs> they think of the word investment as a dirty word. And I was like, why? Well, okay, so 
jewelry is an investment in that yes you reward yourself it's for yourself and there's not really much wear and tear and this will last forever this it's an investment in that it can be an heirloom something you pass to your daughter your granddaughter and it will retain its value so if you want to leave the country bring it with you it's easy but when you want to if and when you want to sell it it might take a while to get the price you want if you want let's say current market value and it's something i guess which we will call second hand or pre loved you know people will make tawad and it will take you a while to get to the price you want or get your money back in the way you want it that's where investment is tricky but also in the philippines where we have pawn shops that's where also people feel it's an investment like if they need money suddenly they can loan these and get money fast and get it back when they want so that's the investment part but it's more an asian thing yeah it is an asian thing i think that it's a rainy day uh protection yeah. you know yeah. but at the end of the day i think both of you agree that the investment is loosely used as an investment yeah. on yourself investment on uh the stories that you enrich your lives with and the emotional joy that actually these pieces uh evoke in us at this point you have a store jade in uh Alabang Town Center, please do invite our viewers to visit your store. Yes, everyone. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your questions and listen, listening in. Thank you again, Ayala Malls for this and Alveo. My store is in Alabang Town Center, ground floor, open air area near Body Shop and Coffee Bean. So there, I'm plugging them too. And we are <laughs> open Monday to Sunday. We have a workshop in the store where every day there's either a goldsmith, a jewelry cleaner, or a stone setter where we can repair and fix your jewelry or make them into something new while you watch. So you are part of the process. And you collaborate with me, my girls, and the goldsmith or stone setter closely. So do visit her Facebook page, her Instagram for if you want to set an appointment. Jade herself actually mans the social media channels. Uh, Tess, for Jubalmer, you have plenty stores in within the Ayala malls Ayala. And, and the world as well. Please do share with us. Yes. Oh, um, I would like to thank everyone again for joining us this afternoon. Thank you to our Ayala malls, to Alveo. Thank you, Jingai, um, for this lovely session. Um, I would like to invite everyone to visit us in Ayala Malls. We have in six Ayala Malls, as you can see in Glorieta, Glorieta 4, and Green Belt 5. We also have in Ayala, Alabang Town Center, very near uh, Jade's shop, and in Ayala Malls, Manila Bay. We also have in the north in Trinoma, and in Cebu, in Ayala Center, Cebu, and in other locations as well. So please come and visit. Um, we are open Mondays to Sundays as well, and we are more than happy to help you and uh, help you in choosing your pearl uh, pieces. So everyone, get your husband's budgets ready. It's Christmas. Uh, we are looking for, <laughs> we are open for business, for accepting jewelry to my husband. We just want to remind the audience also, thank you, but please do complete the survey form from uh, the session which will be emailed to you or sent to you after the webinar and do check out the variety of jewelry stores that can be found across ayala malls nationwide we hope you enjoyed and learned uh whew, that was a lot from today's webinar is if there's anything that stood out it's that both our guests said who are experts definitely in their field both emphasize jewelry is a matter of personal preference. Gravitate towards what you love, pieces that make you make your heart, makes your heart pump or your blood pump, and that pieces that you fall in love with. Purchase with discernment and with your lifestyle and technical knowledge in mind. And so with that, we hope you sparkle, shine, and smile in all the days ahead. We hope you have a glittering holiday season. Stay safe, everyone, and healthy always. This has been Jingai Hovind de la Merced. Have a twinkling evening, everyone. Bye!